Okay, ready? Move on. Need a quick stretch? Okay. Okay, let's move on then to the last uh, chunk of this morning. Uh, the tactical moral emotion. So this has to do with this sense of bigger, better, and our, the moral framework that that creates for us. This is really peculiar. Uh, so we'll take some time here. So the psychology of this is really fascinating. Because it, it, you, once you begin to understand the psychology, you begin to see how it functions in terms of the operations of the world around us. That is, the psychology is basically around our perceptions of shape, change, and size. That shapes are always changing in size for lots of reasons. The shape itself can be physically getting bigger, fuller, or it can be shrinking. But it can be getting closer to us, that's bigger, or further away, that's smaller. Uh, so we have the possibility of movement in space and movement in time. That is, what we're assessing here is a whole bunch of stuff around how things relate to us in terms of apparent size. Where our general functioning is that we want to see good things getting bigger. Closer to us, closer in space, closer in time. Okay? That's a good feeling. Oh, it's a dangerous feeling. It becomes a metaphor for change in value in the same object. So, so what we've got now is a way of looking at one object and thinking about how it changes in value and the moral attributions we give to that change in value. If it's getting bigger in value of whatever our scale of value is, then that feels like it is getting morally better. If it's getting smaller, it feels like it is normally getting morally worse. Unless we've identified it as a really bad thing. And then getting smaller is a good thing, and getting larger is a bad thing. But, but I have some cautions about that. Uh, but it's amazing when you start thinking of all the things that change in value, all the parts of your life that are constantly changing in value, that this is an easy way then of morally working with it. Because you're not distributing everything, you're not ordering everything, you're not being part of a community in terms of everything. A lot of what you do is transforming things, making things different. You take a piece of paper and some ideas and you turn them into an essay, a value, a project, a value. It's worth more than its pieces. Something has happened. It has grown. Well, what, what makes it better? Well, ideally, what makes it better is it gets you an A. Oh, that A. Sorry. I have this real problem with letter grades. It's, it's like, why does anybody even care about a letter grade? Like, what, well, it's because it's saying something, again, metaphorically, about our value and our personal increase. The more A's I have, the bigger, the better I am. How, how do you get there? Um, but that's the way it feels. And that's the whole point of this. It's the way it feels. It feels good to be accumulating, to amassing, to being bigger, to being better, stronger, faster, smarter, all those things. We love them. We like to accumulate them. We love all forms of value increase that contribute to that. And it can be easily wired into the pleasure circuits of the brain, again, through uh, Dopamine leading to dopamine release, meaning you can end up even addicted to this stuff. You can get it so powerfully wired into your brain that you will continually do things just to make things bigger, to amass more, because it feels good. It feels right. Okay, that's the moral side, but it feels good. It's just pure pleasure. And pleasure is always good too, so it's even stronger morally. So you get really, you can get tied into this. So that you have a very strong sense of its positive value, its worth to you, regardless of what it is that's growing. Uh, in terms of the psychology, there's probably a negative option bias here as well, that you react more strongly to the loss of things, their shrinkage, than you do to their growth. 
but it's the way we have where it's fun to almost everything. It's a more of a fear of loss than a joy of growth. But there's certainly powerful positives here. But it's quite possible that if you're faced with equivalent things and it's gaining versus losing, you will work at not losing rather than gaining. That's typically the way we will make our choices. So that's the psychology of this. It's very simple. So if that arrow can be space or time, it's just the sense of things getting bigger as they move towards us or move upwards or however they're moving in a dimension that makes sense to us as a positive uh, way. We want to see more. It feels good to see more. More education at least, right? That way you're here, you're here to accumulate, so that you've accumulated more education. Somehow the mere accumulation of it feels good. Knowing more feels better than knowing less. That's crazy. Sorry. If you study the masters, you know, ignorance is on its way to bliss. Ignorance and emptying yourself is the way to nirvana. And then you're, you're headed in the opposite direction. You're filling yourself up with stuff that distracts, that fills you. That feels good. It's a good thing I'm not a Buddhist. I'm trying to get you out. Go. Go pursue truth and emptiness. Boredom is the essence of truth. When you know nothing and you want to know nothing and you're completely empty, you're so close to nirvana. Yeah, but I'm not a Buddhist. Um, mm -hmm. I'm busy accumulating all the knowledge I can get. I think it's really good. Yeah. Um, the basic structure of relations, it has to do with progressive change. That is, if this is not qualitative change, this is quantitative change. Typically it's easily measured with numbers, but not always. But, but it's that sense of movement, growth, you know, things are incrementally expanding, it's progressive. Uh, ideally, it's open-ended. It can just keep on growing. Um, that, that's what makes us feel best. We don't like to get to the cap at the top of things, the biggest of things. Uh, we, we, but we love that sense of it's growing, it's getting bigger. So any step or incremental change along an axis fits this, and it doesn't matter what that Axis could be an increase in amount, proximity, accomplishment, you can just keep on listing. There are lots of axes of transformation and change. Accumulation, transformation, uh, however you want to measure it, if you can measure it, you can morally weight it in this system. Because your brain is going to attach a moral weight to it if you've measured it. Could get bigger then, right? Well, that would be good. Oh, unless it's a problem, in which case you measure it so it could get smaller. A critical piece is, in fact, that it makes no judgment about the rightness or wrongness about the axis itself. That is, what this triggers, and I was really spending a fair bit of time on putting these notes together, reflecting on how powerful this is. It doesn't care about the axis itself. That is, it cares that it's getting bigger. So what I ended up reflecting on this, so if you read the materials I posted online, uh, and I, I just started playing around with it, realizing one of the things when you look at the military and the way they report, a lot of the way they report is as if more death is a good thing. That is, the axis is horrible, it's death. But it's incremental progress, right? So it's got to be good. We've killed more people today than we did yesterday. Isn't that good? <laughs> okay? That feels like you're doing the right thing. It has an inherent moral drive of goodness behind it. Even though the action itself is one that, under most circumstances, we would say is a really bad thing to do. You shouldn't be doing it. So it doesn't judge the access. It's simply, is, are we improving? Are we getting better? Are we getting bigger? That's all it asks us. And if, if it's bigger, then it's good. It feels good. And this is why this is stuff is moral emotions. We're not talking about reasoned analysis. That's what we have to do later on. We have to put the pieces together through reasoned analysis. What is the correct axis? That is a tough question. That's a value judgment. We'll get the values. But right now, we're learning that any 
change, any progress is going to feel like it's a moral right. Yeah. The good itself, that is the axis, is determined by social expectations, which also raises deep problems. Different cultures see accumulation growth in, as appropriate in different places in different ways. So th there's a lot of things that change from one culture to another in terms of what you should accumulate how you should do so. Should you be most concerned in life to accumulate wealth or friends? Which is more important? What? What? <laughs> Sorry, friends or wealth? No. Wealth? Yeah, you belong here. <laughs> it's very North American. Who cares about friends if you've got wealth? You can always buy more friends. Yes. <laughs> Lots of cultures would say you are a how, what's the, the, the saying about the man who has all the money and no friends? That this is the man who is ultimately um, um, yeah. uh, what, uh, poverty, who lives in ultimate poverty. What uh, researchers uh, show that, uh, uh, I know that you know, uh, uh, you uh, saw the video. Mm -hmm. The researcher, uh, they uh, research on the people around the 70 year. Mm -hmm. uh, and they uh, feel uh, to a law, uh, to a uh, life, and they understand that uh, no money, no health, no nothing can uh, gain, um, uh, give people mm -hmm. uh, happiness except friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, ultimate That's worth and value. Friendship uh, makes yeah. a huge difference. Who wants to die alone? Then you will die, no matter you die alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a philosopher! Yeah. Yes, um, um, read Martin Heidegger, he would agree with you. Um, it doesn't matter, at that point, who cares? <laughs> the most important moment is the moment before you die, and as long as that's a good one, who cares? <laughs> yes? You see, you can make those kinds of judgments. What is the good? I and mean, it's social expectations. There are highly friend-oriented cultures. North America, we are extraordinarily wealth-oriented culture. It's more important to die with money than with friends. Yes. Okay? Uh. But that's the scary part about this. It's about the moral value. But what's the thing about this? When, when your moral system, your moral compass, doesn't ask the question about what it is that's growing, it simply is happier, feels that things are good and right if they're growing, anything can grow, bad stuff can grow. Uh, um, Alexander Shultzenitsyn has a novel called The Cancer Ward, where he has the patients uh, boasting about whose cancer is the worst. Well, that's this moral structure, you know, the feeling good. My cancer is worse than your cancer. You haven't got a lot to, you know, to, to be, take pride in. You, well, it's a worse cancer. It's a bigger, stronger, faster one. I'm going to die sooner. You know, like, <laughs> is this good? You know, but it, it's just, it feels right. It feels good to take that kind of position. <laughs> Okay, positively, lots of positives here. Anytime growth, development, increase, expansion. Just look for that language and whenever you see it, it doesn't sound like it's a good thing happening. Growth of pipelines, growth of energy consumption, growth of economies, growth, expansion, development, we love them all. They just feel intrinsically good. It's also, and this is what makes it so powerful in the corporate work systems, we'll get to there, is it's typically easy to measure. It's incremental, you know, it's stages. You can see, we, you know, we had uh, 300 last week and now we have 350. Oh, this is good stuff. We, you know, we've measured it. Uh, so the quantitative analysis comes into play here. One of the problems of quantitative analysis, um, I don't know if you're taking it, but it, is that there's a core question, what should you be measuring? You, there's stuff you can measure, and there's stuff you should measure. Are they always the same thing? And the answer is no, they aren't necessarily the same thing at all. That makes it really tricky. What typically, the, if it's the axis of growth that's most important, how do you quantitatively measure an, an axis versus another one? You can't. You can only 
you measure quantitatively, it can grow. And the rates of growth between two axes. And then, you know, there's lots of things you can do with your statistics, but they don't tell you whether or not what you're choosing to measure is the right thing you should be measuring. But all it will say is, you now know if it's good. Wide range, very wide range of outcomes. We have moved here to an extraordinarily flexible moral system. That is, we can learn now to feel good, morally good, about almost anything. All we have to do is put a vector on it with growth somewhere. Growth is, and what can we not put growth and shrinkage to? We can do it to just about anything. About ourselves, the world around us, our relationships, things. They can all be seen as getting bigger, smaller, more or less. And then we can make our judgments, good or bad. It's lovely. The whole world now assessed. Uh, the negatives, as I've said, no judgment about the goals. Any progress feels good. This one is a tricky one. We have this intrinsic sense of bigness equals goodness. But that leads to misperceptions. So which is more important, profits or income? Profits. Profits, of course. Operationally, if you say we're going to make, we're going to cut the size of the company in half, but we're going to double its profitability, what's going to happen to you? You're the consultant, you just came in, I've got my MBA, we're doing a profits versus income, uh, you're actually losing money on a whole lot of your operations, we're just going to cut them. It'll be a more profitable company if we get rid of your losing operations. What are you going to do? No, of course not. You fire the consultant. A uh, perfect example. This is exactly what happened in 1963 to Ford Motor Company. They were in trouble. Ford Motor is always in trouble. Uh, all the automobile. Don't ever invest in the automobile company. Great way to lose money. Um, they brought in a consultant to review their operations with a sense of they want to consolidate, rearrange, get become more profitable. Because they were, they were in really bad straits. And the, the consultant said, this is really simple. You make money on everything you produce. And Ford produced a huge range of products. Except for automobiles. Stop producing automobiles. Get out of cars. You would be an immensely profitable company. And Ford said, no. That's ridiculous. And then along came the Ford Mustang and brought them back to profitability um, as a whole through their car operations. So with profit versus income, eh, no, people don't necessarily choose profit, which should make sense, over income. It has a lot to do with other things. It has, it, it's not a rational thing. They want to get bigger. They don't want to shrink in size. Even if you're more profitable, who wants to shrink? Nobody does. Um, another one, growth versus profits. Which do you prefer? Ah, you're crazy. Um, again, it should be profits, yeah. right? But you grow to you, make a profit. <laughs> you grow to make a profit. That's correct. What has killed more companies? Stable profits or rapid growth? Stable profits. No. Stable profits have never killed a company. Rapid growth kills companies all the time. Ah. <laughs> See, but but what I'm getting at here. Yeah. This is one of those core problems with the way our brain gets into this mode, and it's always looking for the thing that grows and assumes immediately that that's the better thing. Static profits? Ugh, who cares? What do you mean? That's income. <laughs> that, that that's what you spend. That's what you. No, nobody cares. Growth. Yeah. Well, But that's this moral sense twisted up in our brain because we can't help but feel it is a good thing. It is morally good and right. It's our moral emotion. So we need to think that shrinkage can be good. Okay? That's hard. You try getting there. The only thing, if it's cancer, yes. But outside of that, it's really hard to get at the sense that shrinking things is a good. Stable is, you know, if it's a problem, we'll just stabilize it. That's all we care. Uh, one, another core problem we've got in organizations is that it radically oversimplifies um, just so many factors. 